And a big good morning to you as we start off another edition of the Ask Mr. Green Thumb Gardening and Real Estate Show. And I am, of course, Stan, and you are? And I am James DeFritis, and we've got our microphone working, which is fantastic. We love that. Yeah, you get spoiled easy, Lou. Uh, That's right. I sure do. (laughs) Well, we're here to help you. And if you've got a real estate question, if you've got a plant question, I first am a horticulturist and uh, certified arbor, certified pest control operator. I've uh, been doing this for, gosh, 40 years or more, and um, which means we can answer most of your questions. Uh, actually, I enjoy going out looking at trees. I try to save trees. I try to help trees. Often I actually bring injectors and try to inject trees to see if I can't help keep them going, sometimes with palms, sometimes with oak trees. You know, if you have an oak and you see little pinholes up there, you see some sap, some sawdust, You've got some more problems, and we can give them, with a Sunday vernacular, their last supper by injecting a pesticide into the trunk. Does that mean they have beetles? They've got beetles without John, Paul, Ringo, and the boys without Epe. We can't do rock and roll like that, we used That's to. my little trigger to get you to you, do your you, imitation. To, to do my imitation without Epe. Yeah, we can do uh, can do little beetles, um, and the beetles do get into the trees. They do wind up eventually killing your tree. And I always say, I'm not super cheap, but I'm a lot cheaper than having the tree taken down. And even some of the great arborists, um, like Carl Utzi, will say, hey, if we can keep the tree alive, we may keep it, you know, we'll be servicing this tree over the next 10, 20 years, as opposed to a one-time cut down. So mm-hmm. I always thought Carl is smart saying, hey, we can get Stan out there, we can inject the tree, try to save the tree, it's better for the tree. Absolutely, yeah, and that's that's another thing with Carl Yutzi is that uh, we had him on the show. He was, you know, he was talking about how surgical he is with his approach in, in in taking down trees, and or at least not having to take down trees. That they have to try to really make sure that what they're doing is, uh, you know, there's so much push today. There's a lot of, uh, you, you know, anytime you're in that particular type of business. There's politics at play, and I think they do an excellent job in terms of making sure that they, uh, they're they not just there to cut down a tree. They're there to make sure that they look at it and find out whether or not it's truly diseased or if it's, a, you know, if it's leaning in a, an unhealthy fashion, and then, uh, and then make recommendations to the homeowner as to whether or not it ought to come down. Sure, and that's smart. And right now, I think even, you know, we had Robert Pankow on, who did a great job on storms and hurricanes, because he's one of the best that I know of when it comes to uh, storm reporting. And he's done that for ever since I've known him, which has been, gosh, it must be over 20-some years um, that I've known Robert. And, um, you know, he was saying, hey, there's there's probably more activity out there this year, according to the National Weather Service. We have more potential for more hurricanes to come through. Now, I know it doesn't seem fair. We've had the COVID-19. We've had all these other problems. We don't need probably, you know. Welcome to life. But that's not fair. That is life. Yeah, you just, you have to kind of suck it up and say, okay, here's the problems and here's where we go to. But, uh, and how do we do it? One of the things would say, you know, if you've got major branches, a lot of times people want to have them cut about 10 feet from the house. Because if it's hanging over your house, there's more potential for a problem. Mm-hmm. So trimming back to a logical spot and a good arborist will know where to trim back to. And that is important. So, you know, I would uh, I would get with someone, uh, well, I'd get with UC Tree Service. There are other good tree services, too. But, uh, you know, he's one of the best. And, of course, he's one of our loyal sponsors. So we want to be loyal to those who are loyal to us. And, um, you know, of course, I'd also say if you needed... A plant ship to, uh, you know, an aglonema ship to New York, I would think, uh, or Dracaena or Diffenbachy or whatever it might be, or Palm, I would be thinking of plants, P-L-A-N-T-Z. Well, of course, I think Steve Stanford's favorite plant is the fiddly fig. I think he... He mentions that usually each time, so I know that's got to be up there in terms of his top plant that he likes. Well, they're an interesting plant because the leaf actually looks like a fiddle looking leaf you know uh-huh. if you look at it which to me is is kind of interesting people like things that that look interesting and the fiddle leaf fig is one of those indoor plants that you know it's a ficus too which means it's usually tougher you know it's it's going to be one of those plants that isn't going to die off as quickly okay. as some plants might so 
and so you know, is, that, is that also known as the ficus lorata it is ha <laughs> see? see you're you're learning my my uh my tiny little brain has put it together uh through repetitive use uh some of this uh information on plants so uh, i'm just telling you the benefits of repetition right there folks uh you don't have to have any true knowledge you just have to have it said to you a hundred times well, and that, you will remember that it becomes knowledge that's right you know, you know how do we learn anything you do it again and you do it again people sometimes say wow you're mr green thumb you don't lose plants i said sure i do everybody loses plants never met anyone in this business who hasn't lost a plant right i mean well that'd be like saying your doctor oh my doctor is so great he's never lost a patient well yeah, good luck with that. Or that he's, you know, in perfect health himself as he may go out in the back and smoke a cigarette. <laughs> but, Cor- correct. Yeah, so, correct. Yeah. Well, you do know my doctor, don't you? Yeah, well, I did know one of your doctors who did that all the time. He was... Oh, uh, Dr. He, Reyes. He, yeah. Dr. Reyes. He was a great guy. I liked his personality. But, you know, he'd be in there going out the back smoking and... Uh, He'd come back and say, don't do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was <laughs> but, a little harder to take. <laughs> but uh, I thought he was a good doctor, a friendly doctor, nice doctor. And, of course, we knew Dr. – well, Dr. Marcoux lives a pretty righteous life. I i don't think I've ever – I think I might have seen Dr. Marcoux smoke one cigarette, and that was when he was doing his Greek dance. And that was really not smoking it. It's doing it because it's part of the uh, part of the routine. But I uh, had a great party. Uh, we enjoyed that immensely. Um Anyway, one of the one of the guys I used to play tennis with when I played more tennis, and always enjoyed uh, playing with uh, with Michael. Great guy, great doctor too. So anyway, we're here to help you. If you uh, need to uh, give us a call, it's one eight seven seven nine six nine eight six zero zero or eight one three two eight nine one eight six zero. I was talking with someone this last week. We were inviting a few people to be guests on our show. And uh, I mentioned, I said, well, I always remember the 813-289-289 because my son had a 289 in his Mustang. And um, I don't know why that stuck in my brain, but uh, I remember I had a Camaro at one point. I had a 327, but uh, that was a that, cubic inch. That's even more horsepower. Even even more horsepower. Plus, I had a Hertz speed shifter and a Holly four barrel carburetor for the gearheads out there who who will know what that means. But at the time, speed was really more important to me. You know, now I drive a hybrid electric, and I'm I'm so happy if I can get you know forty to fifty miles per gallon. But, yeah, that, uh, that's a massive shift from the '60s to 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 now. Is the the concept of it's no longer how fast can you get there. Um, it's now how many miles did I get there and how, how much fuel did I use? Oh, wow, I didn't use very much. And, and now that's the bragging rights. It's, <laughs> it's, it, it, it's, it's the funniest thing how that's shifted. But I guess from an environmental standpoint, that's a really good shift. Um, you know, and, and a, the, the only thing I will say, and I'll mention this briefly, uh, when it comes to the electric car and all this other stuff, it's great, and, and I love the electric car, and I think all, you know, the, even the hybrids, I think these are a great step. Um, but, you know, it really boils down to where you get your power from. You know, mm. if you tell me that your main power, and again, this isn't in, you know, I'm not speaking to, to our area specifically. I'm just saying, in, you know, in, in random, if you're, you know, using clean coal power, and it's hard for me to say that, clean coal power, because I think that's a politically charged statement in and of itself. But if you're using, you know, coal power fired plant to 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 make your energy, and you're powering up your car, uh, you know, from the grid using that, then I'm, you know, okay, yeah, it's good that you're not using gasoline uh, or diesel or whatever your car takes, but you also need to keep into in in your mind that you know you are burning more hydrocarbons in order to charge up your car so just you know it's where the power source starts that you probably need to be looking at that um in some instances um you know if they're having to burn a whole lot more coal to charge up your car then i think the benefits of that are a little offset you know i i think you have to think about that and i'm not saying that in one individual car but i mean if we all do it then you know. You, then I think we and you know, we need to think about that. So, but when you drive down I seventy five, I see 
acres of, of solar cells along the side of uh, I-75 going down towards Sarasota. And yeah. So I mean, there's, solar, there's a lot more than there was. Yes. I mean, solar is an interesting prospect. I mean, you know, they, they have to, they're going to have to make the solar cells even more efficient than they already are. And I know people, oh, my bill's $2 a month because I put solar pay. You know, okay, but how much did it cost you to put those? Well, it's just a, you know, and, and the way they're getting people, in case people haven't been down this road, the way that they're selling this is, well, it's just a power replacement plan. I mean, you're still going to pay for power. Sure. Okay. But you're changing how it goes. Yeah. And, and so what they're doing is saying, well, you know, that $200 a month or, you know, $300 a month that your power bill was, and I don't know what your power bill is because I'm not, I can't see it. And if I did know your power bill, you'd, you'd probably wonder how in the heck I, I knew it. So, but, um, <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, let's just say, for instance, that, you, you know, you had a two or $300 power bill and, you you know it, it's one of these scenarios where if you're paying them and not the power company, I get it. And the way they sell it to you is, um, well, you're being a good steward to the environment, and and that's that's true. Um, but they they keep the you'll have this all paid off in 160 months. What what? 160 months? <laughs> That's how they sell it to you. But anyway, I digress on but the... But now if a good so power company that does solar wants to back the Ask Mr. Green Thumb we'd Show... we all about it, and they could certainly give us a call and talk about it on the air at 813-289-1860 or toll-free 877-969-8600. We are here to take your plant and or real estate questions. Stay with us as the Plant Talk and Real Estate Talk continues. Want to talk real estate auctions? Call James DeFritis at 727-254-7127 or go online at AFLRE.com. And I am Stan DeFritis, and of course you are. And I am James DeFritis, and we are here from 7 to 9 every Sunday morning. And if you have any gardening and or real estate questions, we are here. Um, you know, one of the things I always ask is, you know, one of the things that I think makes a more interesting uh, conversation, especially for real estate agents that have been in the business for, for a long time, is, uh, you know... It's fun and it's interesting, and we all love to see people that post, you know, on the Facebook and say, "Hey, I just had my second closing, and you know, in, th in three hours, I had my second closing." <laughs> um, and we're so interested. And let me tell you, we are so interested to hear about all that. Um, but actually, what I think is more interesting to talk about is maybe this: the uh, the stories where you had to face some adversity, where the closing didn't go exactly perfect, and you still found a way to get everybody to sign and you got the deal done. Now I. I think if uh, you know, if, uh, love to hear that story. If anybody wants to call in, you know, to the eight one three two eight nine one eight sixty and talk to us a little bit about their business and about the you know a, a real estate you know closing that maybe didn't go perfectly, but you were able to find a way to get it done. I think that would be a fun story to talk about. So I'll keep mentioning it each and every week until someone takes me up on that. <laughs> well, I'm sure they will, and I know they're I know those stories are out there and. Uh, Sometimes, though, you when you have a story, you think, "Well, how much do I want to edit this story because I want to keep everything?" Well, uh, and I think the moving. fear, I think the fear for a lot of agents, and especially uh, maybe new to the business agents, well, I don't want to tell anybody I had a problem, then they won't use me. Yeah. Well, I, 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 all right, but here's the thing: if you're an experienced agent, and let me just say, you don't get experience without having problems. <laughs> so a learning the, curve. Right. So the, here's the thing that I would say is that. If you know, and here's the difference between the, the new to the business agents and the agents that have been in the business for 30 or 40 years, they don't care. They know that they already have a base of people that will use them. So they're perfectly fine telling stories that didn't exactly go perfectly because at the end of the day, they already have a loyal customer base and they don't care. So right. therefore, they can tell these stories. But I'm gonna tell you that it doesn't really matter because if I were listening to somebody and they were new to the business and they told me about a closing that didn't go well, but did close and that they were able to face adversity and get it done, it wouldn't make me not use you. Sure. You so. might even more respect for them because they had the tenacity to uh, to make it happen. And uh, that would be a great thing. I was just thinking this morning, actually, when I was driving over here about some plants like the night blooming um, hedge cactus that blooms at night. 
and it has a beautiful flower. And I remember when I lived in Clearwater, we lived in Clearwater, the neighbor had a real pretty one on the corner of their home. And, um, you know, I was always happy with those early mornings. And I did, did get up real early and I would see that in bloom and I would think, ah, gosh, that's beautiful. So, you know, sometimes the early bird does get to see a few things maybe that the, the late riser doesn't. But uh, right now, of course, there are a lot of plants in flower and bloom. You know, roses are in bloom and a lot of annuals are in bloom. I, I've been big this year on um, with the lovely Mrs. GT taking little seeds from marigolds. And we have some out. I started out by the mailbox and they're getting ready to bloom. Uh, it's kind of recycled, if you will. Mm -hmm. and uh, some in the back and um, so sometimes it's just kind of fun to say hey i can start this little seed i can get it to grow i can get it to get bigger and it'll, then it'll d definitely flower for me mm -hmm. so um you know it's kind of a fun thing to see the beauty of you know yellows and bio, pinks and reds bio recycling bio recycling i don't know if that's a term a, new, a made, new term maybe i just made it up yeah i like it yeah and it's and it's a true one so anyway, if you've got stories about maybe something you're growing in your yard and having good success with, or maybe maybe not, everybody's going to have some problems. I mean, right now in lawns, I expect either some chinch bug or some fungus in St. Augustine. You probably have some. And if you don't, you probably will. Now, you can spray and you can knock it down and you can get that under control, but they'll probably be back because that's what insects and that's what fungi does. You know, when you say, well, diseases, you know, we're all worried about COVID-19. We've had diseases forever. We always have some other disease out there, which is one of my biggest worries about COVID-19 is that there could be, you know, what do we have next year? We could have a, another virus of some other type. It's not like they're all going away. <clears throat> And this probably isn't totally going away either. But, uh, you know, I remember hearing stories of my grandfather working, um, you know, when the big uh, Spanish flu came through. I guess he would have probably been a very young doctor at that point. And, um, you know, it was devastating. There were a lot of millions of people being killed by that. Well, now, that was a real problem. Mm -hmm. You know, not where you have 165,000 deaths. Now, I'm not saying that that's not a lot of deaths. That is a lot of deaths. But people, the Spanish flu killed millions of people, mm -hmm. millions and millions. And I don't mean like one or two, okay? It was a lot. And, you know, it's interesting because I went back and I looked at the historical archives, and there were people wearing bandanas because they didn't have masks, you know, so they made their own. Sure. Well, and people today, too, do that as well. <clears throat> they they are. I mean, it, you know, it is, you know, and, and when we didn't have masks to buy, I mean, you couldn't buy any masks, uh, at least when they, they first put in the, the lockdowns. Now you can buy masks. Um, but the interesting thing was is to, to see that, you know, people were doing similar things, you know, in 1918 in terms of trying to, to deal with this unknown threat that they couldn't see. And, you know, and then, of course, history repeats itself. So, um, but that is an interesting topic, and we can talk about that more. You can always give us a call at 813-289-1860 or 877-969-8600. If you have any gardening and or real estate questions, yeah, we are here. Take a walk around the yard. Take a look at those trees. There's probably something going on. The more you look, the more you'll see. And, of course, we're here to help you with those real estate problems as well. Stay tuned as we continue here on the Ask Mr. Green Thumb Show. Interested in having a home consult? Remember, you can reach Stan at 727-423-4794 or on the web at askmrgreenthumb.com. Attention real estate agent.com. Got questions on gardening, real estate, or both? Call now, 813-289-1860. Toll free, 877-969-8600. And now, your hosts, Stan and James DeFritis. And I might mention to you that uh, you see I've got my little name tag on. Yes, my goodness. More professional than we're used to. Well, and why? Because I'm going to be showing uh, the Crescent Oak property at 10 a.m. this morning. Uh, up there at Crescent Cove. That's and, right. Uh, to be specific, 388, um, 3886 Crescent Cove Place, Tarpon yeah. Springs. Easy for me to say. Beautiful place, too. I mean, uh, I used to play tennis up there a lot um, with my old buddy Dave Carter, who I mentioned and uh, actually talked to yesterday, who's in Carolina. 
and uh, great guy. And um, yeah, that kind of floored me that he was the uh, uh, the teacher uh, for Dewey and Allen because I don't I think of those guys as uh, you know kind of being you know you just don't ever think of them as being young at this point in their life um and yet they were at one time and uh you know and now uh i'm not saying they're old fuddy buddies <laughs> don't get that image out of your yeah. mind that's not what i'm saying at all i can see him giving me these uh going hey what are you doing um, yeah, be- but no but what i'm saying is is that, you know for to think of uh, dave carter as as being you know their what would you would you say science and math teacher science and math teacher i was talking to him just yesterday i was letting him know that we had gone to Remax Metro, mm-hmm. and uh, occasionally I've called Dave because he was just a great guy as far as giving. You know, if you, you've got a legal question and it's real estate, I don't know of any attorney that I think uh, who's well. We've got one at, at uh, Remax Metro who works there, who I think is also as sharp as. Mm-hmm. But uh, Dave is one of the yeah, you know, he's one of those sharp guys, and uh, also mentioned that Anthony Canaris had mentioned that uh, his aunt had worked for him, and he says, "Oh yes, he remembered." But then he went back telling me that he. He was going through, he said, to medical school. He says, and I was taking all these classes. He says, round the clock. He says, you know, summer ske- schedule and everything. And he said, I was just burned out just about. He said, I needed, he said, I needed a mindless job. So I took the job as a history, uh, not history, but science and, and math teacher. Wow. Wow. He that said, would not be the job I would uh, pick for mindless job. What I would pick would be ticket taker at a garage. Yeah, well, he... He's one of those sharp, sharp guys. He says, well, I already, he said, I had my master's degree already. He says, and I was going to med school. He says, but my was, goodness, how many degrees and advanced whatevers does that guy have? I mean, he's got enough for about four lifetimes. You know, it kills me. Not only did he was he became an ER doctor in Tarpon, but then he had some health problems where he was in a wheelchair and he goes to Stetson and wheels himself around and becomes an attorney. And I mm-hmm. thought... How many people would wheel themselves around Stetson? Not many. Not um, many. And the, and the cool thing about him, too, for f- folks that have never met Dave Carter, is that he is very down-to-earth, very approachable. He is not a snob. He is a very nice person. Um, and uh, anybody who meets him is very fortunate to have uh, have done so. Yeah, in fact, he invited us again to come up to his uh, camp uh, yesterday from both uh, – you know, the lovely Mrs. GT, and actually you, too. He oh, said, he, I, that's great. I'll just leave the wife at home and we'll go. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, guess who has to feed the dogs in, in the morning, <laughs> noon, and night? Well, <laughs> Why did you think I said let's sleep? <laughs> and, and you can send pictures of the – he said it was actually cool up there last night. You know, I mean, he said that, – Now, that seems hard to believe. Cool said, anywhere. <laughs> he, well, I guess in the mountains in Carolina. Oh, yeah, in the mountains in Carolina that would be. But it just it's hard for my little brain to get the idea around cool – when I work up a sweat walking the dogs one last time before it's time to uh, to go horizontal. <laughs> I told him, I said, it's, it was envious to hear him talking about cool at night. But uh, anyway, that was that was fun. If you've got something you want to talk to us about at cool at night or maybe hot during the day, um, give us a holler and we will put you on at one eight seven seven if you're outside the area, cool. 969-8600. You cool at night, hot during... Are you talking about menopause? That's what uh, it sounded uh, uh. like you were talking about. Or 813-289-1860. We'll put you on locally if you're anywhere in the Tampa Bay area. And uh, I've been talking to a lot of different real estate professionals. I kind of have a list of the people who are some of the most successful in Tampa Bay. And I've been calling a few of them saying, hey, listen to the show. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll have you on as a guest sometime. Uh-huh. And, Where we uh, randomly talk about random things. Well, we do. We talk about random things. And we can talk about, uh, you know, maybe you've got your favorite listing. And sure. We'll, we'll yeah, talk about and that. that's a good point, too, is that, you know, we do uh, we make it fun. So we do talk about a lot of different uh, topics on the show. But one of the things that we we do try to focus on is the title of the show. We do talk about real estate. We do talk about gardening. Um, but, you know, one of the things that's really neat is because Stan and I are both auctioned auctioneers in our business in real estate is entirely based on auctioning real estate. And when you think that through for a second, we're not competing with any real estate agent ever. Mm-hmm. You know, and that makes us radically different than any other colleague you have because any other colleague you have in the business that's also a real estate agent yeah, you're competing with them. And you know, it may not seem like you are, but you are. We're another tool in the toolbox. Right. And we're we're different in that regard. I mean, and I would also say, too, is that, you know, we could be a primary tool. You know, uh, there are people out there that, you know, have an enormous amount of listings. I mean, 
uh, some of the guys in the office, you know, oh, I've got five or six listings going. And my thought to that is if you think you're having challenge, if you're challenged in servicing all of those listings, you could always send one to the auction division if you'd like, and it's not like you're not going to get your commission, because you are. You're absolutely going to get your commission, and uh, it's a way to, in my mind, to shoulder some of the, the work onto a, yet another professional team. And the same can be said at any, any, any other brokerage. You know, if you have a ton of work, and, uh, and you know, and say you listen to us each and every week, which I know you do, um, and uh, you, you already know, like, and trust us, then it's not a big uh, issue to say, hey, I'm going to get those guys, I'm going to call them up and see if they can, uh, we can get them to, to do some of the business for us, because we're going to make the money anyway. Sure, it's one more that you could help get done that month, and that makes all kind of sense to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's a good point. Yeah, we don't have to be the the last resort. We might want to be maybe your first resort when you want to, as you said, increase the number. I want to get that sixth one done this month. Right. And um, I was thinking of only taking on five. I'm going to send this one to the auction boys and let them do it. And there again, I was telling someone the other day, 40% of the time we'll get it done pre-auction. You know, if someone wants to today the guy who's coming to see it said hey if we if i want to put in a pre-offer can i do that and i said sure you can you make a decent reasonable good offer and we will present that for you and um you know the client would just as soon get it done and uh, pam would and we all would so um absolutely you know. and, and again and you know if uh, we don't get that pre-offer you can always come to the auction itself the auction is going to be held on site at 3886 crescent cove place tarpon springs so that's 3886 crescent cove place in tarpon springs and that's going to be on september the 12th at 1 p.m we always recommend that you pre-register and how do you do that? Well, you go to Auction Florida Real Estate, and that's just the letters. That's A F L R E dot com. You can fill in the uh, PDFs, and you can get that to us. Um, say you're, you know, maybe you're in a high risk group. Maybe you're in the seventy five and up club, and uh, you don't really want to attend an auction for fear of being around too many other people. Uh, well, you could actually do that. You can sign up on our website, and you can attend by Zoom. A-F-L-R-E, and you can actually bid through there, too, right? You, you, well, you'll be bidding through the Zoom platform itself. So, But, yes, you'll be given you know, a room number, and you'll be given a, digi a digital bidder paddle. That's always fun to say, digital bidder paddle. Um, <laughs> Easy for you. Oh, heck, yeah. I just uh, <laughs> barely butchered that. Um, but uh, nonetheless, that we have ways and means of getting people uh, to participate um, whatever your comfort level is we've got you so you know there is no reason not to uh, to, to, to do it and uh, you know and again if uh, say you're a little uh, technology you have some fear there um, I you know I've helped many many people download the zoom app and showed them how to do it and uh, I consider that a five to ten minute phone call so if you're not super techie, that's okay. We got you covered there too. It is your prerogative to not be a super techie person, and uh, but I have uh, I have no fear in walking anybody through that. Sure, and that is important. So we might mention that we have that as well. In fact, I think you had a call the other day from somebody in New York. We're advertising now on this property in the uh, what, New York Times. Uh, yeah, we have it. We have it on a lot of major publications: New York Times, Washington it's, Post. It's uh, it's in Dupont Registry. It's uh, yeah, there's we're in a lot of different publications. Uh, Mansions.com, I think, is one. Not that this is a mansion, uh, but it's you know it's a rather large home. Almost. Well, it's a, I call it a mini mansion. You know, it's not quite, uh, um, you know, I mean, 4,100 square feet is a, is a good size, and I'm not, I'm not saying that it isn't, but it's, you know, to me, there's a certain difference in, you know, the, the, some of these properties are 30,000 square feet. I mean, it's, it's yeah, But you're also not spending millions either. You're not. And I would say in this particular property, uh, you know, uh, the opening bid, and the minimum opening bid uh, is 575. Now, that's not where it's going to sell at. But it's, you know, that's where we're going to start the property at. And, you know, but it's a very modest, low reserve. It, you know, the, the seller understands, you know, that, that uh, hey, I want the property to sell. I don't want to set the reserve so high that there's no chance of ever getting it sold. 
Um, so and that happens sometimes too in the auction world, uh, and especially in real estate auctions. You'll get people that will have unrealistic expectations. They'll think, oh, well, geez, uh, you know, I, I want to get X amount of dollars for it. And they'll go right back to the same thinking that they had uh, potentially when they had it listed as a traditional listing with their current agent. You know, and part of the reason the current agent had problems getting it sold was because they, there was an unrealistic price point. Um, agents are really good at having conversations about, you know, let, let's strategize about advertising it. They're really good about having those conversations. They're not really good at putting their foot down for fear of losing the listing. And my mind on that is if you have a listing and you have it for a year and it doesn't sell and then you lose the listing. Now, again, we only get 180-day contracts on these things in a traditional listing. But, you know, a lot of times agents will figure out how to get them to come on board again. If you haven't sold it and you've had it for a year, you and you and you're not comfortable having that conversation with the seller that their pricing is not in line with what the buying public is willing to pay, um, then you have what I call a phantom listing. Uh, you know, what good is that listing to you? What good is that listing to the seller? Well, you have a property that they they aren't serious about selling, and you have a listing that is only a listing in name. Mm. There's no point in it at that point. You, Makes sense. You know, it doesn't make any sense at that point. So, you know, I would encourage all agents out there, if I had one valuable piece, don't be afraid to lose the listing because you were honest about pricing. Tell them here's what it is. Now, right now, every there's no inventory, so things seem to be selling like hotcakes. Oh, yeah. Any, any agent right now that is well-established, I mean... You know, all you have to do is turn on your Facebook page. <laughs> I listed it 40 seconds ago. It sold. I mean, you know? I was talking with a bunch of, uh, you know, some of the agents who were leaders in the industry. And uh, this last week, I, I will again this next week. And if I haven't talked to you yet, I probably will. He's but coming for you. I'm coming He's for coming. you. <laughs> but we want you to know that uh, we want you to, to be a part of our show sometime. That's right. If we help you, then we help everybody. Every Sunday, 7 to 9, we are here on AM860. Stay with us as the Plant Talk and Real Estate Talk continues. Want to talk real estate auctions? Call James DeFritis at 727-254-7127 or go online at aflre.com. Here to help answer your questions as the, uh, the announcer with a big radio voice just said. Anyway, we're here to help you. And, uh, of course, uh, we were talking a little bit about listings and uh, some of the things that happen. You know, we're kind of a hybrid show, as we are, and it's, we are an auction team. We have both on-site, and we also have it on a platform where we could get people to bid from anywhere in the world, which you hopefully... May, you may have heard of it. It's called Zoom. That's right. You may have experienced it in the last six months. I like to say, almost everybody <laughs> has experienced Zoom in some respects, it seems, in the last six months. It's hilarious because most people I know have never, you know, they haven't used GoToMeeting. They didn't use, you know, Google's Meetups or whatever the heck it's called. Uh, no one had heard. I mean, I... I'd never used one. I looked at it and said, well, I don't know why the heck I'd ever use that. <laughs> it, literally, it took a pandemic for these businesses <laughs> to skyrocket. In, and, uh, and, of course, now uh, they've become very instrumental. Um, but uh, so, yeah, that, that, I mean, that's, you know, and, and that's one of the things that Stan and I got together on. And we said, geez, if people are fearful about attending a live auction as they normally would, well, how do we get them to participate and uh, and take away that fear. Well, I know what we do. We let's make it to where they could join a uh, a Zoom auction, and uh, in that way, we're combining the best of both worlds. They could actually participate, see the auction take place as they're, uh, you know, as it's taking place. Now that doesn't mean that if somebody were interested in attending the auction by telephone, we could make that happen. Our contracts allow for uh, telephone bidding. And uh, so that wouldn't be an issue. The main thing there is, you know, you'd have to, you know, if you're not going to be there in person, you know, we would need you to, to wire funds. And uh, you would still need to get us all the information in advance. I, need, I would need to, you know, know who you are. I'd need to get a driver's license, a photocopy of your, your driver's license. And I'd need some ba basic uh, financial statements to make sure that you can uh, that you uh, can pay for the thing that you're bidding on. So I am a 16-year-old boy in the middle of Moscow. I would like to buy. <laughs> how much do you got? Let me see your photo ID. Let me see the rubles. Yeah. <laughs> 
Vladimir, <laughs> yes, you can yeah. bid. You look good to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, your dad's okay, Mr. Putin. Okay, great. Yeah, you're. you're I've been good. trying to break into uh, your system. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, they the mission accomplished, I guess, at some <laughs> local radio stations around here. We won't name any. Um, but uh, yeah, so you know, again, you know, it's it's, uh, and I would say that the real estate business as a whole, like any business, um, if you can shift and pivot, you know, in order to try to deal with the circumstances as they come, you will do better. You will you will inst- you will do much better than the other agents that go well. I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, um, you know, I guess I'm going to go to put an application in at the big box store and hope for the best, you know. Um, and I'm sure that's happened a lot, you know. But I, most of the agents that I've talked to that shift and pivoted and – Have done great. Yeah, that were, and, and especially if they were already established. Now, new agents to the business, I think, were having – they're having more trouble. I think they're going to have to keep that uh, substitute teaching job going just a little longer. Um, and nothing wrong with that. No, nope. um, but the pay scale difference is quite different uh, once you, uh, you know, break into the industry and, and, and develop a, you know, a, a brand name, if you will, as to reliability and trustworthiness, you know, and that's that's really what agents uh, are all about and making personal connections for a lifetime. Helpful, friendly, tr- courteous, kind, clean, reverent. Right. And it, it's kind of the opposite of used cars. You know, I mean, you're, you're trying to build a relationship forever, not the uh, one time, one hit wonder kind of thing. So, uh, not to denigrate used car salesmen. Sorry about no, that. No, I was going to say, that almost out there. sounded like I was doing that. It and, sure did. Yeah. And if used car salespeople, if they'd like to advertise on this show, uh, we're available. <laughs> and I promise to say less negative things about you if you uh, advertise on the show. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I do notice a lot of uh, dealers now, especially for new car dealers, is they're rewarding their employees by what they get for like a positive score mm-hmm. from the clients, which I think is great because all of a sudden it's like, how do I help you as opposed to, you know, take a number and sit over there. And uh, that's not a bad concept. I think that's a good one. We, we pay on the reward. If somebody does a good job, then they get a reward. And uh I think that's that's something that a lot of industries could go to. I mean, I know even in the pharmacy industry, when I was a kid, pharmacist was always helpful and friendly and usually a jolly person behind the counter. A lot of times you go in today, it's like, Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. well, and nowadays, <laughs> you, you you know, you're, you're dealing with a pharmacy tech. You're not right. even dealing with a pharmacist. You right. know, you're, you're dealing with somebody. And I, and I think it's, you know, again, it's it's not to, you know, denigrate, you know, physician's assistants. It's not. Uh, because they actually do do a lot of schooling, but you know, again, it's it's not the same. They don't have the same training as a doctor. Okay, and let's just face facts: they don't. And sorry, you know, PAs. I mean, you guys are very useful, very helpful, but we're really at the end of the day, it's it's volume control. You know, and the same thing with pharmacies; they're dealing with volume control, the amount of pills going out the door. Uh, versus uh, when you were a kid versus what's going out today. It's totally different. It's astronomically different, exponentially, uh, you know. So, you know, all of these things were kind of invented in sort of to help volume control. Um, And, uh, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, we also have people living longer. So, you know, I don't, you know, you could argue the quality of life that that they get living longer is better, um, but uh, they are living longer, statistically speaking. So... It makes a difference. It does. Um, but uh, we do want to mention, if you uh, didn't catch the last uh, segment, uh, we are doing a real estate auction on September the 12th at 1 p.m. We always recommend everyone get there an hour before. We're going to do a series of open houses. They'll be on Sundays, 1 to 3 p.m. Um, and I think they're starting, uh, is it this Sunday or the following Sunday? I think it is, yeah, I think it's going to start the following Sunday, Uh Let's see. Yeah, the 23rd, the 30th, and the 6th, uh, those, uh, th- th- that'll be the, uh, the three open house sessions we'll, where you can go meet the lovely Pam Davison, who is the uh, originating agent in this transaction. And she is a delightful soul. You'll absolutely love her. And, uh, you know, and you'll get to meet her. You'll get to see the a beautiful home. And uh, she was on the air with us last week. Yeah. And she was on the air last week. Did a great job. Mm-hmm. Fantastic lady. And uh, I wish her all the success in the world because she deserves it. 
I agree. Well, we're here, of course, to answer any and all of your questions. You know, if you've got, uh, we're going to have, a, I think, a landscape designer. It will be on in the next hour. So, you know, if you've got those, you know, everybody goes out and buys one of these and two of those and two of those. I call it the Noah's Ark effect, where you, you buy all these plants and then you're not sure where to put them. Because you know you love plants. You've got that biophilia. Well, we can talk a little bit about maybe where you might want to have lines flowing and groupings and uh, shade plants versus sun plants, things of that nature, which I think will be helpful. That sounds great. Stay with us as the plant and real estate talk continue. You can dial us right after the top of the hour. Interested in having a home consult? Remember, you can reach Stan at 727-423-4794 or on the web at askmrgreenthumb.com. Attention, and I am Stan, and you, of course, are... And I am James DeFridis, and uh, we are here every Sunday morning from 7 to 9 to answer your real estate and gardening questions. So if you have something going right or going wrong in your grass, Stan, as they say, is the man. I will help as best I can. I mean, even when I deal with people, there's, you know, we're all going to have some problems, and that's just part of life. And you just have to deal with the problems that come and see what you can do to uh, rectify those problems. And uh, we're going to mention that uh, in real estate, sort of the same way. You get problems, and you have to rectify the problems and absolutely. try to make sure they happen. You adapt, improvise, overcome. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one, of the, one of the things that, um, you know, and I'm not, again, a lot of times the information I'm giving out is information that is more geared towards newer agents, not to senior agents, because they, they know these things. Um, but one of the things I will say um, this is kind of the sad fact of things that happen in life is that eventually uh, husband and wife will buy a home together and then one of them will demise and then they'll pass on to the Rainbow Bridge. And so one of the things that I would encourage is, you know, make sure that you have your, your, your ducks in a row. Make sure legally you have things figured out. Um, you know, one of the things that will be required uh, you know, when that happens is that you'll have to submit to your title agency a death certificate. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that can be incredibly painful, you know, when you're dealing with, uh, you know, a spouse sure. that's died recently that you've, you know, been married to for 30 or 40 years or longer. And uh, so one of the things I would say is, uh, you know, these things happen. And unfortunately, in the real estate business, because there is a legal aspect involved in every tra in transaction that we do, um, everything has to be done correctly. And uh, so, yeah, you know, I again, you know, if you haven't had this conversation yet, you probably need to. You need to go down and find yourself a, a good attorney who can help you with some planning, some, you know, making sure that everything is handled. Uh, going through probate is no fun. Sure. And uh, and yet I see a lot of smart people, uh, you know, they wait until the problem happens and then then they have an even bigger problem. So uh, you think about it, you know, and, and that kind of uh, ties into. Uh, well, I guess, if, you know, we have that guy, attorney guy that's on the this, this station too, uh, Joe, Joe Pippen. Joe Pippen. Well, I know, and, I've known Joe for probably 30, 40 years now. Yeah, he does. I think he does a lot of estate planning. Doesn't oh, he does. He? Yep, that's his specialty. Yeah. So there you go. That a free commercial plug for you, Joe. Now, just remember the Ask Mr. Green Thumb show, too, when it's your turn to be on the air. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, don't count on that. But yeah. yeah. No, no. He might. He, <laughs> he might. might. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. But not, not on this station, though. And that other station. Do it on that station. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned, hey, the gardening guy you, you used to know, and now I'm doing the spot in right. there and where <laughs> they used to be. Yeah. Um, uh, now we'll take a free plug in on any station. It's it's all good. It just says sure. it, more people would hear it on that other one. But anyway, um, so yeah, so we do want to mention <laughs> allegedly. So yeah, we do want to mention to people that you know again it's a new hour and uh, we've only got another fifty minutes left of this show. So um, we are doing a real estate auction. Real estate auction is going to be on September the twelfth uh, at uh, at one p.m. We always recommend people get there an hour before the auction so that they can go and do a last minute check around make sure that they take a look at it one of the questions we get all the time is well, what about a home inspection absolutely encourage it get it done go ahead and get a home inspection done the time to get the home inspection done is before the auction occurs not after we've dropped the hammer after we drop the hammer it is yours and whatever you find out after that is yours as is where is that's right you know that's one of the things you'll hear us say is you'll say you're buying this property as is where is and uh you know enjoy it uh the good the bad the ugly it's all yours enjoy so you know the, and again most of the properties that we take 
take a look at. We usually don't take on properties that, you know, that are going to be, uh, you know, super fixer uppers because we just, you know, it sets us up for too much liability. But one of the things I always encourage is that if you, if you want to get that inspection, get that inspection done. If you want to get an appraisal done, go ahead and get that appraisal done. Um, it'll be on your nickel. But here's the thing that I would say, uh, neither the inspection or the appraisal are going to matter in terms of what you bid. It may advise you as to how much you should bid, but in terms of actually purchasing the property, neither of those contingencies that would normally be uh, you know, deal breakers or you know a, a pivotal moment in a transaction are gonna matter in a real estate auction because we sell all of our properties with no contingencies. You are buying them. You are all in. And the other thing that I would say, too, is uh, when you show up, especially on day of auction, show up to the property and you've registered, we've seen your ID, and uh, you, uh, you, you know, say you're the winning bidder. But mm -hmm. only, let me, let me clarify, if only if you are the winning bidder, you will be required to put a 5% escrow deposit down. And that escrow deposit is non-refundable. It has to have teeth. You have to mean it. Uh, you know, in years past, you know, a lot of real estate auctioneers would go about their business and they would get a lot of tire kickers and they would get people that would show up and they would raise their bitter paddle and they, uh, oh, you mean pay for it? <laughs> that part? Oh, <laughs> no. No, I was here to, to participate and have fun. I didn't mean actually was actually going to complete the transaction by paying for it. Oh, that's important, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that, that part is, is kind of important. And uh, so I do mention that to people. I try to tell people all that to, you know, to people up front so that they're not uh, upset when they find out after the fact because you know, I've told them in advance. So people only get upset about what they feel they should have known before that they learn about afterwards. And that and that's uh, that's universal. That's a human condition on anything, on, especially in business deals. People generally get very upset when money is involved on the little tidbits of information that they sh thought they should have known before. Um, so, again, uh, I'll always tell any client uh, all the information that they need in advance to make them a more informed person. So That's the reason we, before we do an auction, there's a little... We uh, have a disclaimer. Disclaimer, which yeah. we will tell you all the pros and cons and what you need to know and uh, right. and make sure that we're all on the same level playing field. Correct. And that's also in the registration paperwork, too. Um, you know, it, it expressly, uh, you know, states out, hey, this is what I'm agreeing to. This is what I'm buying. This is how, how this transaction will, will take place. And, uh you know, and that's, you know, so that's something that uh, people, you know, need to be aware of before they start placing their bids. Um, but uh, but on to something you know better. How about gardening? I mean, that's yet's really your. That's my first that's love. That's your first love, your forte, as they say. Um, what are you growing right now? Well, of course, I'm still harvesting avocados all the time, which mm -hmm. uh, I'm growing the Brogdon, which kind of turns a black color. And uh, I mentioned that. So Joe and Joe's wife won't throw it out just because it turns black. It's going to be it's it's it, when it's ready and it's ripe, it'll get a little softer. That does throw people, though, the black skin because it looks a little bit like an eggplant. Yeah. And I know you're used to the green, all green, but that's not in my case. That's not necessarily I, I brought one by the office the other day and gave it to terry kelly one of our our former uh guy we used to work with and um great guy by the way and uh, i said hey and he goes hey my wife said why are they black and i said because that's what this variety does brogdon turns black i think it's one of the tastiest of the varieties that we have locally but it will um it'll get soft it'll get um it's a kind of a thin skinned and i think it's the reason brogdon was not pushed more for you know shipping because i think when you have a real thin skin i'm not sure it would ship as well as some of the thicker skinned i mean i've bought some of the avocados in the store that are like the winter mexican you know from from california and they've got like a quarter inch thick skin this doesn't this mm. has almost maybe a tenth of an inch skin so it's it's a lot thinner i think the flavor is one of the more um, outstanding flavors sure. in avocados and i've been growing this for a while and of course i give some away and um but you know i grow that i've been growing some flowers i saw i had a little rose in the backyard the other day from a rose we put in a few years ago hibiscus of course in bloom every day mm -hmm. yellows and reds and pinks and i noticed your uh starfruit tree is just uh it looks like it's uh 
I don't know, doubled in height. I mean, it just it looks. Uh, I don't know what you're doing to it, but it's uh, it kind of does its own thing. But yeah, yeah, I need to probably cut it back a little, actually. Yeah, I just last time I was at your place, I looked at it and I said, "Man, that thing has re- really has grown tremendously." From you know, of course, I remember when you first planted it, and I'm thinking, you know, like anything else, everything changes. Um, but yeah, that uh, you know, the, boy, that's whatever you're doing. Keep on doing it. I've got more fruit working. coming on and more bloom. Actually, it's one of those trees that you may actually have some bloom on and some fruit on at the same time. And uh, that's kind of unusual. Normally, we think of something to flower, and then it fruits, and then you harvest. I've got some bananas that are ready to come along fairly soon, probably next month or two. Gotcha. Um, so they haven't quite they haven't quite rounded. They still have ridges in them, and once the ridges become rounded, they'll be ready to harvest. I'm not harvest. sure I understand. What do you, what do you mean by that? Well, it just there there's still some lines on the side of the fruit, if you will. It hasn't totally. They'll become more rounded, more smooth, and um, they'll get larger. I need to cut off the tails, which is the male part of the bloom. Mm-hmm. And um, there again, you know, in some parts of the world, um, I remember uh, Reagan's wife, who was uh, from Thailand, they would take the bottom part of that and they'll make like a candy out of it. They, they, of course, in many parts of the world, you know, I think Americans, we, we sort of use, we use this and we use that. I wasn't aware that Nancy was from Thailand. She looked very American to me. Uh, well, I'm talking about Reagan. Oh, I thought you meant Nancy Reagan. No, no, yeah, yeah, right. Nancy Reagan. Yeah. Well, I was talking to Nancy <laughs> just the other day, and I've decided to go back and be president. Oh. No, we'll, uh, we'll. Uh, yeah, I thought I I'd throw you off a little bit there. I, I, I can do a Reagan too. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but my favorite one is Jimmy. You know, I can do Jimmy Carter. Because, well, you know, nuclear wall would not be good you, for anyone. You'll be able to do this imitation for about 15 more years, and then uh, nobody, nobody nobody's will going to know who me. you're doing. Well, I'll work on we'll some ha- new ones. We'll have, to, we'll have to put up on the YouTube page. You're assuming so, I'll be here in 15 years. Of course. Yeah, well, maybe. Yeah. Come on. You know, I mean, you, you got to play for the long haul. You, uh, it doesn't the, matter. The long game, man. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, my thinking on that is, look, you, you, you may not get the home run, but, hey, Aim for the home run, even if you're going to only get a base hit, right? Well, you got, you got to keep <laughs> aiming. you got to keep fighting every step of the way. That's if right. you want to give us a call, one 969 outside the area, or locally, it's 813-289-1860. That's and right. we'll be talking about what? Well, real estate. Real estate and gardening, and we'll try to get you on. I mean, all our lines are really full right now. They're lighting them up as we speak, so stay with us as the Plant Talk continues. Want to talk real estate auctions? Call James DeFritis at 727-254-7127 or go online at aflre.com. Fritis. And I am Stan DeFritis, and you are? And I am James DeFritis. You see what happens. You make fun of the lack of calls coming in, and bam, the calls just come on in. See, we've got, I think Bobby is with us, and Bobby is a landscaper, landscape designer. And um, Bobby, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Bobby, now how do you say your last name? Bobby Heinst? Heinst. Hints. Okay, I knew I was going to butcher it, but I thought I figured myself, why not go ahead and just ask him when we get you on the air? So one of the things that I, I wanted to say is uh, it was, it's so great, great to have you on here. Um, I'm looking at your little bio that you sent me. I mean, B- Bobby is a Florida native. Uh, he has been residing in a lifelong family home in St. Petersburg. Uh, he graduated in 1996 from Peak Tech Horticultural Program under the late Greg Charles. And uh, currently, you're a business owner, and the business you run is called Terrascapes, and you specialize in design and installation of decorative planters and outdoor furnishing on patios, rooftops, and balconies. Is that right? Yes, it is. All right. I like to give the, a little a little primer here, if you will, of uh, any of the guests that we have uh, call in. And I might and, say Greg Charles was a great guy. I yeah, mean, I mean, I was going to say you have a connection there. He's passed on, and oh, I knew him. I met him when I first uh, was in uh, as an extension horticulturist. This was probably near forty years ago, and wow. um, he uh, he came to meet. Uh, at, we were at the old office on East Bay Drive in Largo. And uh, I spent most of my career probably there while I was with an extension horticulturist. But uh, Greg was just a great guy. He was always thinking, and he, he just seemed like he had a lot of, even in the last few years when he was kind of bound to a wheelchair, 
he his brain you could just see was always working and always a nice guy would you not agree oh, always always yeah just a yeah, super guy. as a matter of fact i'll probably be quoting a lot of things he taught me <laughs> <laughs> we'll mention some of the things you know i see people and i always say i call it the noah's ark effect they go to the local nursery and they get two of this and one of that and two of this and two of that but they're not really sure what to do and where to put it exactly exactly and um i've found at the retail nurseries if you Pay close attention to where the plant is already stocked in the nursery. If it's in full sun, typically that's what it requires. If it's in the shade, that's what it should be requiring. That's so a, if, you a know, bit if of information. No one there, yeah. I'm sorry? That's, good, that's a good tip. Yeah, the, the other thing that I, I think is interesting, too, and I don't know why people don't think of this, um, but again, you know, it, it, and it, it's so obvious to me, but a moisture meter, they are so cheap. Um, and I know people sometimes will use their finger, but yeah, I don't know if that always tells you is, you know, tells you what's going on in the top. It doesn't exactly. always it doesn't always tell you what's going on down at the bottom where the roots and stuff are and moisture meters are cheap and you know and why not just pick one up um, one of the things that Stan and I used to do over and over and over again when we were uh, you know doing doing the uh, Tampa Bay Times home shows is we would do pH testing and we would have people bring in now we would tell people in advance hey look just bring in like a you know an ounce of dirt and invariably they'd bring in a trash bag full and they'd wheel it in <laughs> and you're going oh i didn't quite need that much but okay you know and um but yeah you know one of the things we would find is what we already knew is they would show us you know this bag of sand and go huh why isn't it growing <laughs> and i'd go well yeah i think because you got a lot of sand there mister yeah, it's florida backyard right. sand as opposed yeah. to a good dirt so that makes yeah, a difference as well <laughs> not many not many nutrients in sand at all <laughs> that's true that's true and uh so now you're doing uh like someone calls you up and let's say they want to put like a, a, a kind of a landscape for their patio or porch or back area you you come up with a little design for them or how how does that work well typically what i do is i get a, a feel for their personality mm -hmm. and ask them specifically what they would like to have and then of course inform them of what's going to grow best in what area and what's available for that planting and uh, then i actually because i'm not very tech savvy i actually uh paint a picture of the plan to present to my client. Wow. Uh, my father was an artist here uh, when I was growing up, and he you couldn't drive two blocks without seeing a signage that he hand-painted, mm. uh, designed and hand-painted. And wow. th thankfully, I inherited enough of his talent. Not I'm nowhere near as good, but I inherited enough of his talent to be able to do that. And it, it usually conveys quite well that, that my clients are usually very surprised. And they, uh, they also have a keepsake of what, what their patio actually looks like. <laughs> you, Bobby, we're gonna, the music tells me we're going to have to go to the news, but we're going to hold you on if you will. Yeah, just hold, hold tight for us, and we'll come right back to you just as soon as we get back from the news break. Most Stay with definitely. us. Definitely. And uh, the rest of you, if you've got a question for Bobby, hit your speed dialer right now. We'll get to, you can ask that question directly. Interested in having a home consult? Remember, you can reach Stan at 727-423-4794 or on the web at askmrgreenthumb.com. Attention real estate agents. Need help selling a listing? Auction it off with Remax Metro. So auctions work, and with Remax Metro, most auctions are scheduled within 45 days, selling at fair market value, and we'll guarantee your commission. Auction your Florida real estate with Remax Metro. Go to aflre.com. A for auction, FLRE for Florida real estate. Call 727-423-4794 today or go to aflre.com. And now your hosts, Stan and James DeFritis. And we'll go right back to Bobby. Bobby, uh, you could you'd call yourself a landscape designer, I would think, right? Yes. And um, now we were talking, uh, well, somebody asked, you see in a lot of books, especially in the old books, they talk about foundation planting. What would be a foundation planting and how would that relate to you? Well, I found with, found, and I made these mistakes myself before I uh, was trained properly. 
mm-hmm. at P-TECH. Um, with foundation plantings, the thing to remember is that most all shrubs want to be trees, <laughs> and right. they need the space to grow, and you need to maintain your home. So a good rule of thumb is to stay at least four feet away from the foundation uh, with the proper plant so that you can maintain your home in the future and and give the plant the best possible location for its health and growth. That's important. Yeah, I mean, I just looked at a hedge yesterday at a property that's probably 20 feet tall. It's a viburnum odoratissum. And it's not that it's not a pretty nice solid hedge, but I keep thinking this thing should probably be taken down to maybe six to eight feet as opposed to letting it, you know, totally, you know, you can't hardly see the sun on that side. Um, But, you know, that's my own personal opinion. But uh, I looked at it and I thought, boy, that's, you know, it's picking the right plant for the right place. And you might exactly. go along with that as well, right? Oh, most definitely. Because uh, a big mistake that I made before I knew exactly what I was doing, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I actually planted a ficus tree within three feet of my house. Oh, my. At yes. And uh, learned about a year later that that was not going to be a good idea. <laughs> yeah. It was you know, go pushing against the house. and Plus, ficus trees and their aerial roots becoming trunks as well it was going to keep spreading and spreading so uh yes i i definitely learned my lesson from that one it reminds <laughs> me of alexander the great one time i think in india he had there was a a ficus uh, the banyan fig that was a quarter mile long and he ha- housed all of his troops underneath there and of course he was conquering half well most of the known world at that point but i kept thinking um you know when something can travel a quarter of a mile it may be Maybe it might not be the thing you put in your, you know, as you say, three feet or even 10 feet from your home because it just gets too, too big. It wants to be huge. And now freezes do somewhat set ficus back here when we do get a hard freeze. But still, that root system can, you know, you can start to crack foundations, lift foundations, lift driveways. And people don't seem to, we don't think about those things until we do. Well, yes, until it it costs you quite a bit more to (laughs) remove it. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. And um, I think that's a good point that you mentioned about picking plants in the nursery, too, the ones in the shade areas. You know are going to probably need shade, the ones in full sun, full sun. But uh, And some plants require a lot more work. I mean, I love roses, but be prepared that you're going to have black spot, powdery mildew, downy mildew, spider mites, aphids, scales, and other than that, they're trouble-free. Um, you know, but that just, it's just what happens. I mean, but I love roses and I still have a rose. Um, of course I, at one time I had a Don Juan and I loved that rose because it didn't seem to get black spot, powdery mildew, downy mildew. Um, it seemed to be more of a toughy cause it was a climber. And it is, it, it truly is, uh, out of all the roses, it's the most resistant to all the fungus and insects and everything that goes with it, most roses. That's true, and I was thinking. Now, the uh, what's the the knockout rose we we got a few years ago, and everybody said it was going to be great for this, this, and this. And, and then um, when I saw it in landscapes, it did seem to have, in my opinion, you know, it wasn't a total totally as free of problems as originally advertised. No, and, well, and I don't think any plant ever is. Uh, you know, suddenly there's a hybrid of a particular plant. Uh, for example, I remember the if you recall when the frisbee hibiscus came out on the market Mm -hmm. uh you know uh dinner plate sized blooms and uh even with the knowledge that i had i could not get that thing to survive (laughs) (laughs) Uh, you know because they're as a hybrid you know it's supposed to be the brand new thing that's going to do well no matter what until you find out through experience that that's just not the case that it's going to have problems. Yeah, sometimes the hybrids, you come up with something really unique, really, really cool, but maybe there's also some genetic weaknesses. I mean, when you come up with something that's huge flower, it, it uh, maybe is not as strong as take that old standard, you know, yellow or red that's been around forever, and that single seems to bloom every day without much problem. But even with hibiscus, I would say everybody buys them when they're flowering and they're cute and they're two feet tall. Now, when they mm-hmm. get to be six feet tall, sometimes they kind of outgrow the position that you put them in, 
And then you're thinking, well, if you do have to trim them back down halfway, you're going for a period of time without bloom. Exactly. And that's where selective pruning comes in uh, to keep up with it and remove a stem at a time so that you always have uh, the other stems that you haven't cut yet, you know, blooming and, and staying beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good advice because it always reminds me of the guys that trim, you know, the city guys come by and trim the crepe myrtles by. And I always say they put them on, you know, uh, on roller skates with a power cutter and they all go <laughs> whoop. And then they, and, and they go back and they go, well, there's two inches of uh, wood there now. Um, and eventually it looks kind of funky, but, um, you know, it's kind of the standard way that they do it in most of the parks. There isn't what I call selective trimming going on most of the time for community workers. Well, and that's why it's so important to, to hire professionals in the field so that you do get the best quality of your plants. So I, I've always thought it's, you know, if you want something done right, ask or pay a professional. Uh, I couldn't agree more. And, Bobby, before I forget, uh, if somebody wants them to uh, have you come out and take a look uh, at their property, uh, how would they get a hold of you? I am at Terrascapes, LLC, okay. at gmail.com. Okay, Terrascapes, LLC, at gmail.com. Okay, I'm writing it down. And the phone number to call would be 727 698 Three two five four. Okay, perfect. I'm currently currently working uh, with a friend on a website. He's a designer, uh, but other than that, I am on Facebook with a few pictures of of past jobs that I've done. That's fantastic. Well, That's yeah, I just, one of the things I have no I noticed about myself is I'm really good at having people on, and then I usually forget to tell people how to get a hold of those people. So I'm trying to correct that. <laughs> well, I'm glad you remembered this time. <laughs> yeah, this time I did. Next time, who knows? Uh, but uh, so uh, so anything. What was one of the last projects that you did? Uh, you know, uh, what, what, you know, was it a big high rise or was it somebody's backyard? Or uh, tell us a little bit about something you've done recently. Well, there is a home in Longboat Key that uh, has an interior atrium off of their dining room. And when uh, the people purchased this property, uh, it was typical Florida plants that weren't doing very well. There were some Hawaiian Thai plants and, you know, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And everything was in really, really poor condition. So I removed all of that and uh the new owner wanted a zen garden which turned out beautifully uh i chose the the right size bamboo for the space and uh statuary and uh put a bamboo arbor above because it's a two-story residence uh to break up the monotony of the plain wall and uh, that is actually uh, there's a picture of that on my Facebook page. Oh, if fantastic. anyone would like to take a look at that. And yeah, uh, I'm, uh, to, to this day, I maintain it for them about every month. They're, they're out of state residents. <laughs> <laughs> so they're coming in just a few times a year, probably, but they really want it to look that certain look when they get there. Yes, exactly. In fact, uh, the, the wife told her husband that, uh, in that space it's hers that's where she'll be and he can have the whole rest of the house <laughs> <laughs> well if it keeps the marriage happy and everybody's you know if mama's happy everybody's happy so that's that's smart on his part to say yeah, hey happy wife happy life <laughs> keep, keep that zen garden where you where you need it and uh, that's smart well see you are a you're also a marriage helper because you're gonna make sure that they have that zen moment that they need well, and speaking of that, that's uh, funny that you'd mentioned about marriage because, <laughs> because uh, my neighbor who has lived here as longer than I have, she's older than I am, uh, but she too, I live in the twilight zone. Uh, no one left my neighborhood unless they died. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if you will, through sight and sound. And, <laughs> but uh, but uh, she, at, in their, at their home, there's actually a patio on the west side that is hers that I designed specifically for her. And there is a patio on the east side that is his that I designed specifically for him. 
Uh, uh, he's a big into boating, so uh, it's it's very tropical and uh, lush with with uh, greenery, you know, grass, ornamental grass type plants, and and they are both as, as thrilled as they can be to have their own patios. You made his kind of <laughs> nautical like uh, the skipper in Gilligan. You uh, you have like a boat thing there or something. I'm just I'm trying to envision in my brain. Um, well, at one point on the husband's side, uh, they had the face. The fence has been replaced since then, but they had a wooden fence that I actually painted a mural entirely on the fence of his actual boat. Oh, neat! Yeah, it, it was great fun, and anything, anything to beautify a space. Because, uh, as Greg Charles would say. Uh, your your outdoor space is an extension of your home. You want it to be as comfortable as your interior. Very true. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something that, you know, one of the things I would always uh, applaud uh, Stan is that, you know, yeah, we do the real estate thing. It's, it's, you know, Stan does the horticultural thing. But really, at the end of the day, um, if we can make our own little corner of the world a little prettier, a little brighter, a little happier, uh, why not do it? And uh, that's what we're all about here on uh, on the radio show yeah well and yeah and it's therapeutic it's therapeutic well and yeah bob if you want to stay through the next break set we'll uh, we'll keep you on yep you've brought some great, thank you some great questions and some uh, good answers and if you want to know something from a great landscape designer well you stay with us as the design talk plant talk continues here on the ask mr green thumb and gardening and real estate show want to talk real estate auctions Call James DeFritis at 727-254-7127 or go online at AFLRE.com. Your hosts, Stan and James DeFritis. And we're talking with Bobby Heinz, who is a landscape designer. And uh, I think it's great uh, that you brought up some good points. Um, you know, when you go to a nursery, Bobby, how do you look at something to decide, I want to pick that, 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 and that? Well, typically, before I go to the nursery, I have a plan. Right. Um, and then when I get there, I uh, discover what plant is going to work best in the area that I'm planting in. Is it full sun? Is it shade? Is it moist? Is it too dry? Uh, all those factors. Well, I think that's important. I've even gone to different nurseries and get you look at the same plant, and because of the soil that they're growing in, Sometimes, you know, the plant here, it's in kind of a moist soil. In this nursery over here, they have kind of a drier mix. And not that the plant can't adapt, but I, I do find that there's differences that you'll find in different places and different wholesalers that grow plants. Oh, yes, most definitely. And so that's different as well. Um, I think also, of course, uh, you know, this time of year, we'll wind up sometimes getting into some insect problems or fungus problems. I was just thinking about... Uh, the alamanda has a yellow bloom, and of course, uh, I don't think I've ever sprayed an alamanda ever in my life. And I, you know, having been born in in St. Petersburg and being a, a pest control operator guy for many, many moons, not that I'm doing as much of that as I used to do by by a darn sight. But uh, I was just thinking, don't think there's some plants I've never had to spray, and other plants that you're always seemingly, you know, are just prone. Uh, Indian hawthorn, for one prone to fungus prone to fungus yeah. prone to fungus prone to fungus that little red spotting that you get in the leaf and um it just happens oh, well that and the kunti plant mm -hmm. oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> with with scales rather, yes and rather than treat it i just uh cut it all back yeah i've taken and, a couple of sagos out that i had in my yard just because you know they were just i thought god i'm fighting these things all the time and i'm a pest control person originally i mean now i'm using mostly organic sprays when i can because i find there's people out there saying hey we really just want organic and so i've been trying to find stuff like neem oil and other things that will work that are not a um you know toxic yeah, the things that are less toxic and better for the environment yep absolutely exactly yeah, exactly. and that's one of the things, too, that, uh, you know, that Stan is you really, in the last uh, 15 years, has really specialized in, in trying to be the guy that saves trees, not you know, not the guy that takes them down. And I think that's kind of a misnomer that a lot of people have with Stan and his background is that, uh, you know, he, he is all about, you know, uh, doing what's best for the environment and uh, being a good environmental steward. 
I mean, in the old days for borers, I would hit it with lindane. Now, lindane worked great. It was benzene, benzene hexachloride, and you'd see the borers waving the white flag as they came out dying out of the holes. But I kept thinking, anything that's that toxic, um, you know, I'd always be wearing a respirator and gloves and stuff. Now I like it. If I can inject into the tree, I don't even have to spray up usually on the trunk. I, I, it's occasionally we do. But mostly we'll be putting the pesticide directly in to the sap system, and I find that pretty effective. And I also use some nutrient injectors as well normally because getting something healthy is probably as, as important as trying to get rid of the pest. Oh, most definitely. I, I mean, that's the reason typically why you have it there, to enjoy it, not to kill it. <laughs> sure, right, sure. I mean, you know, if we need to call Carl Utsi, we can. I just looked at a palm tree last week that it was just so far gone. I said, look, you need to call Carl Utsi and have this palm removed. And it's a shame because it was a 50-foot tall uh, phoenix, oh, um, you know, a true a dactylifera. Um, and I, I, was, I said, look, I could try to inject it. I just don't think it too much, you know, 90% of the palm is gone. And so I don't think I can save it. Now, the other one... It's 40% still or 60% still looking good, and we did put, you know, some OTC in it, and I think I think we can keep that one going. Um, no guarantees, but, um, you know, that's just a little well, sidebar. And, a, and, again, that takes me back to the right plant in the right place and the right maintenance. Sure. You know, the knowledge of what the plant needs. Now, I mean, I'm sure – that's ever changing uh, in real estate because you have a homeowner, they sell their home, a new person moves in, they didn't choose the landscape. And, and I found a lot of times, um, much like I was uh, before I, I learned anything about horticulture, I loved plants and I did well with them. I wanted those more than toys when I was a kid. <laughs> but uh, but I didn't know what I was doing, even though I, I thought, oh, the plant looks great. It's doing well. And then I, well, a week later, it's dead. So, yeah, well, it makes a difference if you know what you're, you're getting into. I remember one of my students many years ago when I used to teach at a technical college or at, in the evening program, you know, the guy was in the business and his name was Alan Weatherall. Nice guy, still a friend of mine. And he didn't really know what he was doing, but he kind of learned as he was going um, about where to put things and he was putting things that were going to be too big underneath windows and you know at first he said well I just like plants and this is a natural extension of what he was doing um, turned out I me mean, Alan was a sharp guy he could have been good at, at anything he did probably but he kind of learned you know behind the scenes after he had problems exactly and that again that's why it's so important to get the knowledge first and and that and- helps yeah and I like your painting um, idea, too. That's that's neat. You know, we have a, a friend of ours, Roger Bansmere, who's a painter, and he, he will tell you about him painting signage, uh, you know, here and there. And he became a really well-known artist. He said but when he was going through high school, his art teacher didn't think he had much talent. And, you know, oh. <laughs> and I thought, never let a teacher decide what, what you're going to be in life. That's right. And um, that's, the, that's the, yeah, you got to follow your heart. Exactly. He does. Now he's kind of a world renowned artist. But, uh, you know, he said, well, I painted signage and stuff. You know, he said, whatever paid the bills, uh, you know, 40, 50 years ago. And uh, of course, now people line up to get some of his uh, landscapes that he does. And he he can take something and he does a great job. On sure. It. Yeah, and I'm he's, sure he's well, super talented. Yep. Well, and that that was my father as well. He was uh, signs by Henry. Oh, uh, Henry Hint. And uh, I mean, there wasn't a person who owned a business when I was growing up that didn't know who he was and wasn't calling or knocking on the door to have a sign uh, made for their business. Uh, and like I said, I got I got a small amount of his talent. I'm nowhere near as good as he was, but but uh, I'm able to convey my plans through well, painting. Well, thank God some of his ability rubbed off to, on you. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I was just painting last night till one o'clock in the morning wow. for a, for a friend of mine. Wow, that's dedication. <laughs> well, it <that's, that> means <laughs> you're a night owl and you like to paint. <laughs> that's right. It, oddly, yeah, it's odd I'm a landscaper, but I'm a night owl. <laughs> I do a lot of planting by the moon at my house. <laughs> well, Bobby, hints that we really appreciate that you spent a little bit of time on this Sunday morning with us, explaining a little bit about what you do, and uh, we'll make sure we put your numbers and stuff up on the screen when we get ready to edit up this show. But it was so enjoyable having you uh, participate. Thanks thank for being with us. Thank you so much. Yep, and thank 
Thank you. It was my pleasure to speak with you and uh, and uh, get some insight on your knowledge, Interested Mr. Green. In Tom. <laughs> Thanks again. Thanks. Reach Stan at 727-423-4794 or on the web at askmrgreenthumb.com. Attention real estate agents. Need help selling a listing? Auction it off with Remax Metro. So Auctions work. And with Remax Metro, most auctions are scheduled within 45 days, selling at fair market value, and we'll guarantee your commission. Auction your Florida real estate with Remax Metro. Go to AFLRE.com. A for auction, FLRE for Florida real estate. Call 727-423-4794 today or go to AFLRE.com. Thinking about-